All right, guys, if you've ever considered adding thermal imaging to your HVAC tool bag, you might want to watch this video. So I've gotten questions with the other videos I did about finding a refrigerant leak with a thermal imager. So, I mean, in theory, a, a hole in a coil should act like a metering device, get temperature and pressure change. So I think the key will be this unit's been off for about 10 minutes, so this line's at a steady state. Uh, would be to maybe run the, if it's a heat pump, run it in heat for a minute or two, warm up that coil, shut it off. Uh, do the same if it's a straight AC, run the furnace for a minute or two, warm up that coil, turn it off, and then uh, start looking for your cold spot. Um, based on the color palette that you use, you may be able to get a better um, visual on where the leak is. You have to try that. Um, but I'm cracking this Schrader cord just barely, just enough to get a little bit of a tiny leak and you can already see the change. And I mean, uh, it's, it is what it is. Um, that leak is now turned into a, a metering device, so you should be get, able to get a change. And I'm going to try different color palettes to see which one works the best. But uh, first time I get a chance to check this, see now I'm going to snug it back in, and you're going to gradually see it stabilize back out. Um, uh, next time I find an evaporator coil with a leak in it, I'm going to warm that coil up uh, with some airflow for a few minutes. Uh, maybe run the heat. If it's a heat pump, run the furnace for just a minute. And then see if I can find the cold spot and see if it actually uh, actually works the same way. So right here we have an example of the picture-in-picture -picture mode. Kind of allows you to get a background image of what you're looking at and a thermal image combined. And we're checking uh, condenser fan motor operations. You can check your compressor, how hot it is, how hot the motor is. Get a good idea on that. Then you can check your condenser coil. Maybe you're looking for restrictions in one of the circuits. You can find that with a thermal imaging device. And checking for restrictions uh, across a filter dryer. See that's 84 degrees on that side. And we're at 84 degrees on this side. So no restriction in this dryer. And here we're looking at an evaporator coil. There's your liquid line coming into your TXV. You can see the difference between that and your actual coil temperatures. This is a downflow coil, so the reason you're going to see the top of this coil is drastically warmer is that's going to be the return air coming in through the top of the coil and exiting through the bottom. So uh, just in case you were wondering. And then over here we've got a supply register, another example of the picture-in-picture ability to kind of see what you're looking at while you're getting your temperatures in your image all right so this is going to be a breaker panel a breaker in the top right the center portion of it is for the dryer which is running right now uh, the outer sides are for the range and you can see that here's a ceiling fan running and that motor gets a little warm when it runs constantly uh, stays around 102 degrees, but it's uh, just a good thing to look at. And obviously, checking your doors for any kind of infiltration. Do we need to upgrade the weather stripping around that door? Keep a little bit more of that air out. Help things be a little more efficient. The door itself is 70 degrees. All right, this is my dog, Maddie, and this is the digital image that it records. And then after this, you're going to see the full thermal image. Then after that, you're going to see an overlay of the digital and the thermal image that allows you to have a little bit more detailed visual of what you're trying to explain to the homeowner. But we're going to go ahead and cover this thing real quick. It comes in this nice rubberized box, very firm, protective case, still fairly small to slide in a pocket in your bag. You can do that. It's going to come with a user guide, and instruction manual, and a quick start guide, multiple languages. We'll cover that. You open up this case. You're going to have the thermal imager. It has a thermal camera on it. Then right down here on the bottom, if you can see it, there's a digital imager on it. It has three lights that give you kind of 
full power, medium power, low power as far as your battery strength. They're going to flash when you're connecting it to the app. And it also has these clips. So you can hold this then you can hold your phone. I'm trying to be coordinated, you're looking at your phone and then you're using this to kind of line up your uh, center point of aim. That takes a little practice, but you can also take this and just simply click it right on the back of your phone. It's right there. And you can use it separately that way. But the key feature is this thing is wireless. So it Bluetooths right to your phone. There's no cords. There's no SD card. We're going to go into this thing, how it operates. You download your photos immediately when you take them, your images, videos, straight to your phone, photo album, video album. Inside here, they didn't add the cloth for cleaning the, the lens. I had some extra ones, so I did put that in there. And it's going to come with a USB-C charging port right there charging cable it's about three feet long two feet long plenty if you want to charge that thing up so let's go into the app real quick so the app you're going to go in here and have some other apps on here for some other things i use you're going to download the miles e measure tools app if you have ios you're going to click on that then you're going to hold down this button. You're going to turn this on. And then it's going to start searching for your device with your phone. Probably should turn this on first. Then open the app. That way this thing's already out there ready to go. I'm going to do a research. So, yeah, you want to turn this on first. Then open your app. And then after it does the search, it'll bring it up. TP2 plus 79% battery power. You're going to hit connect, join, and once it joins up, you're ready to go. It's not much different than using wireless gauges. You wait for them to link up. They get linked up. Now we're going to switch over, and then there we are. So, you can look around. So I'm going to stand this thing up while we cover the phone and the features. You can use that bottom clip as a stand if you want to. Stand that thing up. It also has a place on the bottom if you want to put this on a tripod. You can do that as well. So, first thing we're going to cover is different color palettes. You've got your lava, you've got your iron, which is what I typically will use. You've got a rainbow, two rainbow versions, and you've got your black hot, and then you've got your white hot. So I typically will use the iron palette. So you've got your center point, and you can remove and adjust these up in the top corner, on the left corner of the screen. It's going to give you your center point temperature. It's going to give you a maximum, which is going to be your little red crosshairs. And then you're going to have your minimum, which is going to be your green crosshairs. And you can remove those however you want. If I want to take those off, I can take those off and then just use my center point temperature. But I'm going to add them back. You're going to have a scale. It gives you your highest and lowest temperature within the uh, range or picture of what you're looking at. So once you get those turned on and set, then you can go in here, you can do full infrared mode. You can do your digital image alone. You can do a picture in picture where you can be looking at something and then kind of focus in on the area of concern, but still have the background to stay oriented or to maybe give the homeowner a better visual of what you're looking at. And you confuse the two, confuse them and you've got kind of an overlay of your digital image and your thermal image so that works pretty good you can adjust the percentage whether you want to go closer to full infrared 
or more of a digital image and as you see as I adjust that that image will adjust over here you can add points point one if you want I don't know if you can move that and turn that back off there's point two I'm gonna add another one point three just keep hitting that cross here and add as many points as you want and I think that's the number it only add, allows you the extra three additional points so we're gonna go back out of that we're gonna come back in we've got to figure out how to get those points cleared off I know there's a way to do it I just I haven't been using them so I don't know quite how to get those points turned off but let's see what happens number of points deleted so there we go I can delete that one tap on it delete it tap on it and delete it so there we learn together so once you add a point it's there when you get ready to delete it tap on it and then hit your trash can and it will delete that point so next up if you want to make a line across there you can do that tap on it delete it you can do a I'm not sure how that works I'm gonna to have to look back into that but anyway you've got settings up here so you can change your measurement range to low temperature mode or high temperature mode whether you're looking for cold or hot spots and there's the train so anyway you can set alarms for a low alarm and a high alarm you can do your power off 10 minutes 20 minutes go figure that train came by while i was trying to do this anyway uh, you can do a factory reset puts everything back so your battery capacity capacity so more of the functions down here shutter adjust correction you can go into here like i said and set your pallets you can go into these settings and you can set you want to use meter or feet for your distance range you want it fahrenheit celsius or kelvin or scale your emissivity which i think 95 is about standard depending on whether you get a lot of glass or shiny objects you may need to change that so you don't have that reflection you can set your atmospheric temperature so whatever the temperature is outside you can adjust that don't know that it makes a huge difference and then distance to target just depending on how far you you are from your target setting that distance will help you kind of get a better overlay of your digital and your thermal image so it has those functions now it has a photo library that's going to save any videos or images i don't have any images in here just videos so you can go back and look through them if you want to download one you just simply will pull that video up and then you see this arrow on the bottom you just simply hit that and it's now been saved to your phone photo album if you want to share it you can share it you can bring that in there and pull something up if you want to do that and send it to someone email text or if you just simply want to delete it delete it now if you want to do a mass deletion you can just simply come over here to the select button now you'll see all of these have a circle just hit this square they've all been selected and then hit trash and then you have now deleted everything and cleared out your album so you have camera mode and video mode so if i want to go into video mode i'll touch the video camera my button will turn red and we will start recording you see you get the countdown up there your video length when you're finished recording you just hit stop if you want to take an image click on the camera 
now you can just take a screenshot snapshot successful let's go back into the photo album and here we are we have our video image and we have our still image I'm going to delete that is it delete okay and we're going to delete the video delete okay and we'll go back in I uh, hit the wrong arrow went all the way out so you have to get used to using the app but it works very well the fact that it's Bluetooth makes it so much simpler because everything's right there on your phone like I said you can snap this thing right to the back of your phone and then you can just hold it like a regular thermal imager you can turn it sideways if you want to get a different view you can do an image correction on that so that it balances out we're going to go back unlock that there we go now we're balanced back out I'm going to do an image lock I can do that that's how you do that so you'll hit this lock button on the side and then as you turn this thing it'll hold your image horizontally however you're turning your camera so you can use it as a regular imager or if you need to get back into a spot you can just simply take it off your phone and then you can stick it back to whatever it is you're trying to look at put it in there get back there and get a video shot so I've enjoyed it so far so guys this thing does have some uses in heating and air conditioning these days having a thermal camera can be really important whether you want to check for restrictions and dryers coils check motors check breakers and breaker panel uh, you can check reversing valve watch it while it's shifting make sure it's making a full shift is it bleeding from the low or from the high side over to the low side um, checking to see if you've got a good split as far as your system running properly it's operating properly but in real hot weather a house can't cool down um, you can check for insulation problems in the sheetrock and the ceiling uh, do they need to get their insulation upgraded do they have leaks around their doors where they're bringing some heat in their windows um, there's multiple uses you can use to you know hey the system is running properly but look at your door you're getting all this hot air leaking in your front door your back door around your windows look at the heat that i see in your ceiling you can see the the um, studs across the top of the ceiling um, where there's poor insulation you've got hot spots things like that and then just diagnosing uh, restriction issues or problems and as you can see it, it should locate a leak as soon as i get an evaporator coil that's leaking once i confirm that with a leak detector i'm gonna try using this and see if i can get another video for you when actually seeing a leak in a in a coil inside a house and inside a system but um anyway guys it's kind of that place in the middle the other one's too small it's got to be tethered by a cable to your phone um, the other one's large you can't really keep it in your bag it takes up too much room you can slide this by itself right in the pocket um, some bags you can keep it inside the case slide that case in a pocket um, I'm probably just gonna slide the camera in, in a small pocket somewhere and keep it where it's secure doesn't get damaged things like that but um, I'm gonna use this thing more in the field and we'll, we'll see what we can come up with uh, with a leak search on an actual leaking coil but it it does detect refrigerant leaking uh, we just got to see if it does it on a coil anyway guys appreciate you watching this is the milesy tp2 plus there's a tp2 pro and there's a regular tp2 uh, this is the one in the middle link in the description uh, it's about 400 dollars roughly uh, you may find it a little bit less depends on where you're shopping for it at but uh, if you're thinking about adding a thermal imager and you don't have one yet, um, this is one you might want to look into.